here is a simply supported beam uh, and there is this load resting on it and because of that there are these two reactions at its ends right now things are symmetrical because the wing uh, the uh, span is 40 while the load is exactly at the midpoint at distance 20 and therefore the reactions understandably are equal but of course we can change this so I can change this distance to make it something asymmetric let's say uh, 10 or 15 or something and then the reactions would change accordingly the load has moved towards left so naturally the reaction on the left has gone up while the reaction on the right has diminished uh, not necessary that uh, uh, the load should be within the span we can give it some overhang also so I can just uh, move this load and you can see as I move it dynamically the reactions are changing when it comes exactly on top of uh, this reaction then the load is entirely taken up by uh, that particular support so the beam is kind of redundant in that case and then we can go beyond this support this is interesting in this case the reaction on the left has become downward so it is negative now although the number uh, is not showing it but the direction can be seen while the reaction here uh, is more than the load to compensate for this extra downward force so this way we can take care of the support reactions let us see uh, the next variation or the next uh, parameter that's available here and that is shear force uh, one can imagine that uh, this beam is sort of uh, chopped off say here in that case this part of the beam is having a upward force so at this particular section that we have uh, taken uh, that must be resisted this shear force this tendency of you know the right part left part moving up and the right part moving down therefore uh, has to be checked at that section so this shear force is plotted in this diagram here on the left of the load the shear force is uh, shown by this rectangle up here okay. and uh, you can have some uh, convention that okay left side up is positive so I have shown this to be positive shear force as soon as we cross the load and come to say this side then uh, the downward force on the left is more and on the right there is only the upward force so again that shearing tendency is going to be there only in the opposite direction this time the left part is going down the right part is trying to move up so shear force becomes negative according to our convention uh, then as we move this load the shear force diagram also updates not only in its si uh, sign so positive negative all that uh, but also in magnitude the next parameter we can plot over here is the bending moment diagram so over here uh, we are looking at the bending tendency of the beam and uh, that depends on of course the position of the load as one can see for this point load uh, the bending moment is maximum exactly underneath this load and uh, as we shift the load the bending moment also changes uh, you will see this maximum the height of this peak is not a constant so it is not only shifting but it is also changing in magnitude and you would notice that exactly at the center and we can actually uh, give those values say exactly at 20 it reaches the midpoint this maxima and also the it maximizes so it's maximum of maximum uh, by the way as this load moves so we can imagine this to be say an axle of a moving vehicle or a train on this beam which could be a girder of a bridge uh, then this maximum of the bending moment diagram is tracing uh, a certain curve this is called as the influence line diagram 